Well, hi everybody. I'm John Redland, and this is my review of WWE SmackDown for January 3rd, 2020. First SmackDown of the new year, and oh boy, it really felt a lot like the SmackDowns we've seen for the last few months. Now, not as bad as some of them, but it felt painfully average in a lot of spots. A few returns, shocking returns, well, we'll see, and one good women's match. Want to make mention really quickly, you may have noticed Derb uh, has not been part of the reviews this week. Do not worry, he will be part of the reviews whenever he wants to be. He's doing his own thing. He's his own man. He's my best friend first, co-host second. And Derb, thank you so much for the great amount of work that you have put in on the channel in the last few years. I can't wait to be doing more reviews with you. Also, do want to mention that it is going to be snow time pretty soon. And if it's anything like last year, you guys, uh, longtime subscribers of the channel may remember, I was a little bit stressed out because of the snow. I live up on a big hill, so I will be reviewing the stuff at home, but I may not be traveling anywhere to review stuff, except for big events like the Rumble and stuff like that. So just wanted to mention that really quickly. And now let's get to the review. Not a whole lot happened. We had recaps of the Brian Corbin Miz three-way, and by the way, they're in Memphis, and Memphis was kind of alive and kind of not. I think Memphis for AEW Dynamite will be a lot hotter uh, next week. Hopefully they will, because Memphis actually has a rich history in wrestling. We get Brian in some kind of weird, you know, three ape, three Ewok shirt, a three walk, if you will. And he's talking to Miz is talking to him and says, well, you know, you beat me and you need to defeat the fiend. Defiend him, if you will. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that terrible pun. We then get Sasha and Bailey in... They're talking New Year's resolutions. You're not going to follow through with yours. Um, they really need to do something with this. I don't mind that they're both heels. I think Bailey's heel turn can work, but th they need to do something else with it because now she's just seeming kind of mopey. And I I'm not saying that Bailey can't pull this off because she can. Sasha also, I'm kind of over Sasha as good as she is in the ring. I don't know. I mean, this isn't working for me, but I understand why it's working for some people. I'm not saying, you know, hit the reset button already, but it's pretty obvious we're going for, you know, Sasha and Bailey at uh, WrestleMania. We then get Lacey with Dana, and Lacey then instantly mentions, you know, because Sasha and Bailey were writing down uh, Lacey Evans' daughter, best game face in, you know, wrestling, by the way, at least among children, and says, I don't know where you get off, you know, scaring, uh, scaring a child. Well, they are in Jerry Lawler's hometown, and he knows about getting off while scaring young women, doesn't he? Jerry Lawler, the pedo that he is, so anyway... And it, it was fine, basic promo and everything, and then Alexa and Nikki Cross come out. They used trick camera work to make Alexa look tall. That was adorable. Then we had the best match of the night. We had Lacey and Dana versus Sasha and Bailey versus Alexa and Nikki. It's a nice way to get the women all human centipede together. That's right. I was going to work that joke in some way. Uh, there was nice work with all of these women. All these women did pretty well. Sure, okay, were there maybe some miscommunications? Yeah, you're going to get that, but I thought this match actually flowed just fine, and I thought the women did a very good goddamn job. Um, of course, Michael Cole, at one point, uh, people point this out, I also noticed that he kept confusing Alexa Bliss and Dana Brooke. I know that Michael Cole's a bit of an idiot, but they don't all look alike. It's not like the Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other. Um... We then get Dana hitting a senton. Yeah, her swanton didn't quite hit, and she did apologize to Sasha as she was going for, you know, the pen. Hopefully Sasha's okay. These things happen. I'm not going to blame Dana here. She did not intentionally go out there to hurt Sasha. It was a bit of a botch, but hey, the match is fine. It was what it was. And, of course, Lacey, uh, you know, the Southern woman, you know, keeping the black woman down with the woman's right. That's right. I was going to say that, you know, one way or another. Not saying Lacey, just saying the whole Southern and African-American woman. Let's move on from this. So, okay, Dana picks up the pin over Sasha. Bit shocking, but hey, if they're going to go uh, with Dana getting a bit more of a mid-card push, I'm all for it. I um, I don't know why in the world oh, this Otis and Mandy thing is still happening. Mandy's trying to apologize about the uh, fruitcake thing. Otis is upset at Ziggler for stepping on. Okay, whatever. We then get New Day and Miz. And we had a 2020 thing of pancakes on a pan and Big E dripping his syrupy goodness all over Kofi's cakes. Have fun unseeing that. Miz was watching this, by the way. And Big E talking about balls dropping. And Kofi said, no, there was only one ball dropping. What the hell were you watching? Big E never fucking changed. Miz was upset and dumped the stuff on the ground. Because he's upset. Because he's tired of the fiend messing with his family. He violated the sanctity of his home. And they did something weird with Miz later. Anyway, we then get Elias strumming his big instrument out there in Memphis, mentioning 2020 and what people need to do. Said, if Shane comes back, send his ass to Raw and a few other lines. I hope they do a little more with Elias and then maybe he gets a chance to be 
featured a little more in the Royal Rumble, give him 15 to 20 minutes, and I think he could have a nice performance. It doesn't have to be long, but just give him a couple of eliminations and do that. And then we get um, Michael Cole saying, the Revival have not seemed like the elite team that they are. Aha! I see, I see what you did there. And then Revival and Gable. And, okay, he's it's Chad Gable, by the way. He's not the stupid name that they give him. And he says, well, I'm, it's like, I've decided to rise over size. I'm going to turn that as dirty as possible, and you fucking know it. Um, so, anyway, uh, they say, hey, you can't beat us in a match. Wait, you know, Gable's like, wait, but I was part of a tag team to beat you guys. That's pretty good matches there. So, it's Chad Gable versus Dash Wilder, Dawson on commentary. And Corey did have one good line. He says, some believe that the earth is flat. It doesn't make it right. And it's AJ Styles. That's who they're referring to. Or they got to be referring to somebody. I hope nobody else on SmackDown. Or I hope nobody on SmackDown. Rather, I know AJ's on Raw thinks that the earth is flat. That's stupid, by the way. And nice exchanges. Ankle lock for the win. And then they attack afterwards. Hit the shatter machine. But then, all of a sudden, Sheamus' music hits. He's coming here to say that they... Oh, he kicked Chad Gable pretends to be shocked exact replica of when Seamus came back and uh hit Daniel Bryan I believe and they did the whole you look stupid thing uh Seamus is back till mania I would be amazed if he was around much longer than that he deserves a mania payday I'm just worried about you know the spinal stenosis he apparently had I know he was out with a concussion for a while but I think he's gonna be back for just a little bit and that's it maybe he'll be back till summer SummerSlam I don't know and then we get Kofi with Big E versus The Miz they they face each other a lot, so they got countered a lot of moves. There was a decent exchange here, you know, ni some nice, you know, grappling. And then suddenly Kofi hits a dreaded roll-up, one, two, three. Miz gets upset and snaps and attacks Kofi, and Big E runs him off. And then he snaps at the fans, and all that I've done, you know, all that I've gone through, this is what you're going to do. So they're turning the Miz heel after his organic baby face actually worked, or his organic baby face turn actually worked. Okay, whatever, I don't exactly understand, but okay. <laughs> we then get Brian... And Roman Reigns talking about, like, you know, Brian wants to win the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns says, oh, really, then? I'm going to win the Royal Rumble and face you. I've been waiting for this for a while. These promos were not very good, and which is unusual because Reigns, as much shit as I give him, has usually del delivered a lot of his promos with conviction, especially in the last couple of years. And Brian usually is pretty good with this, but yeah, this just wasn't that good. We then get a wild John Morrison appearing as Kathy Kelly tries to interview The Miz. Uh, we're getting the dirt sheet back, I guess. Something It was a bit of a weird use of John Morrison. But if they want to give Miz something else and they want to turn, and they want to have a heel run, okay. I mean, I was a bit surprised. Everybody knew he was going to return, so I guess they could have saved him for the Rumble. I get why they did it here. A bit weird. What do you guys think? Let me know. And then we get Drew Gulak versus Otis. Why? Why? Why do they hate Drew Gulak and why are they insisting on Otis? I know Otis is a bit over with the crowd, but I don't get it. Drew kind of runs him down with a little bit of a PowerPoint thing, a little bit of a, like, oh, you look like this, and then he gets beat up, and then he gets beat with a Vader bomb. Cool. Mandy and Sonya are walking back, uh, watching backstage, and Ziggler's there, and Mandy says, you should apologize to Otis, and Ziggler says, I will. We never see that, by the way. We'll probably see it next week, and then we'll see Ziggler, I don't know, go piss on Otis's mom or something like that. Hopefully not, but whatever. Maybe he is here to show the world and zigzag all over her. I don't know what this review is anymore. We think of Braun versus Cesaro. I don't know why Cesaro has a weird Matrix entrance and uh, Nakamura and Sami Zayn were out there with Cesaro. So the numbers game, of course, you know, would catch up at times. Braun would get beat up a little bit. Seemed to hurt his hip, so that was like, you know, favoring that and everything. And then does the run around completely ignoring the fact that he hurt his hip. Hits the running power slam or, you know, the big old power slam. One, two, three. Nakamura attacks him right afterwards because Nakamura got pinned by Braun after that. Not too much to this. Unless they're going to have a title change and Braun is going to win the Intercontinental Championship for Nakamura, I'm not sure why they're really doing this. Nakamura's title reigns have been absolute ass on the main roster. Even his NXT title reigns have not been all that good. <clears throat> so then we get uh, Sasha and Lacey are going to be happening next week. Okay, repetitive, but whatever. I mean, hey, at least if Lacey wins, she can get a shot at Bailey. We think of Roman and Bryan versus Corbin and Ziggler. It was a match. It happened... It, it wasn't that it wasn't well worked. I just don't care about Corbin. I don't care about Ziggler. I, I just don't. It's not even at their heels. I just don't give a shit. Suddenly, The Fiend starts laughing. And then we go to commercial. Then we come back and everybody's having a grapple. Brian's outside. Reigns is getting beat up. Eventually tags Daniel Bryan. 
We get a Spirit of Corbin. We get Daniel Bryan with the rain, Ziggler, Ziggler, and then all the lights and all the spoopiness and everything. And suddenly the Fiend is there. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. We know he's the Fiend. We know Bray Wyatt's the Fiend. Michael Cole's a goddamn idiot. So then we get um, we get uh, Daniel Bryan diving outside. Fiend no-sells, tries to beat him up. Fiend uh, runs headfirst into the post. Ow, my mask. And then beats him up a little bit, you know, runs him through the bar, you know, gets run through the barricade, all that stuff. Roar, roar, you know, he's doing the mandible claw. Uh, stop with the red light shit. It, it's anno it was annoying when they did it with Kane, and now it's like it makes me not want to watch The Fiend in any matches. <clears throat> I mean, quite frankly, they can do all the smoke and mirrors they want. Barry Windham, it, or no, Barry Windham, uh, you know, one of the Windhams here. I mean, Barry Windham was a very good worker, but uh, Bray Wyatt's a good worker. But he's not an exceptional worker, and I just think that this is a smoke and mirrors gimmick. And I give him credit for getting it as over as possible. And we got the match going on still somehow because Brian's going to check on check on or Reigns is going to check on Brian because Brian's all down. Sanjay Dutt's even out there. Everybody's out there, and they get the handcuffs and they get the cans of dog food. Now I'm glad the dog food didn't get open, but just enough. Don't go with this whole loser eats dog food match because it's a terrible idea. It's not going to do anything for Corbin. It's just annoying. It's definitely not going to do anything for Reigns when he wins. It's fucking dumb. It, it's not a way. It, it, I may not want to see Roman Reigns Universal Champion again, but I know I'm going to. I know he's going to beat The Fiend. This is not the way you do it, because then it's just not going to be very believable. Sure, oh, they're worried about the fans booing. Fans are going to boo anyway. They're going to do that. I'm not saying I'm going to, I'm going to be 50-50 on it. Like, I might boo, I might boo, I might cheer. I, I don't know. But just stop with this whole dog food thing, because it's definitely not doing anything for Corbin. It's definitely not doing anything for Ziggler. I mean, neither is neither are the fucking pink pants that he had, but anyway... Um, so they get the, the dog food doesn't get open because suddenly the Usos are there. I hope the Usos did not drive themselves to the arena. That is right. I'm still going to go with that because DWIs, DUIs are no goddamn joke, no matter who you are. So they save. Okay. That, and our show goes off the air. Okay, cool. Um, it wasn't a bad show, but after the women's match, that was about the peak for the wrestling. It's not that any of the other matches were horrible. But the women got the most time, and they got a lot of goddamn time. I think they got the almost first 30 minutes of the goddamn show, which is good. So anyway, C. I'm going to give it a C. I mean, a solid C. Wasn't bad. Wasn't great. Pole somewhere up there. Anyway, guys, I got to go rest up for Wrestle Kingdom in a few hours. So let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.